Hi, I'm Dr. Aaron Kovaleski with Echo Medical. I want to talk with you today about genicular artery embolization, which is a treatment for knee pain due to osteoarthritis. Uh, but before we get into the actual procedure itself, let's talk about what patients typically are going through if they're going to be watching this video or coming to uh, the office here. So typically patients have knee pain, uh, which can get worse with activity, such as going upstairs or going down inclines. Uh, most patients that have osteoarthritis in the knees, they typically feel the best in the morning. So right when they wake up, before they get out of bed, that's the best their knees are gonna feel. And then as soon as they kick their legs over the side of the bed, it starts this whole cycle over of that daily pain and inflammation and everything else. Your symptoms may be improved by taking things like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs like ibuprofen or Aleve, may get better with things like ice and compression and maybe even some elevation. Um, if you have any of these symptoms, you probably have osteoarthritis. Many of you may even already have a diagnosis and that's why you're watching this video now. So who gets osteoarthritis of the knee and why? About 25% of people above the age of 60 have it. It is slightly more likely for females to get it than men, but not by a whole lot. Essentially what osteoarthritis is, is wear and tear of the knee as you get older and you use your knees a lot. Pretty much everyone uses their knees on a regular basis. People that have more demanding jobs or were athletes, they tend to have a little bit more wear and tear. So what does wear and tear of the knee mean? We have two bones that join at the knee, which is your femur and your tibia. And then in between those bones, there's soft tissue called cartilage and meniscus, which provide a buffer between the two bones so that way they don't grind on each other. Over time with usage, that soft tissue or that cartilage can wear down, causing the knee to be bone on bone, which can cause inflammation and pain. So let's talk about the makeup of the knee and how this injury or condition to the knee occurs. And then we'll segue this into how GAE works. So whenever there's a breakdown of cartilage and bone is allowed to rub on bone, that causes a repetitive injury to the joint the more your knee is used. So with any sort of injury, there comes inflammation. Inflammation is actually a portion of our immune system that is trying to heal something that has been damaged. We see inflammation very regularly on our skin. If you get a bug bite, like a mosquito bite, you get redness and you get some swelling at that skin site, that's due to an inflammatory response where it's trying to heal that area where there is a bug bite. Or if you get like a paper cut, the skin around that area is gonna get red, it's gonna swell a little bit, and that's your body trying to heal that injury to your skin. It's no different in the knee. So if you have bone on bone rubbing against each other, that's gonna cause inflammation, which will cause swelling and pain in that knee that gets worse throughout the day. And then over time, since you're using your knee every day, you get that inflammation and pain on a daily basis. The concept of osteoarthritis is repetitive injury to the knee over and over again. So it's not ever actually able to heal. A part of the inflammatory process is the creation of new blood vessels or neovascularity, which allows more blood flow to get to the injured part so that way it can heal faster. Well, if you have repetitive injury over and over and over again, and your body's sending more and more signals to get more blood vessels to develop in that area, you can have an abundance of an inflammatory process that can actually cause you more pain out of proportion to the injury that you have. And that's where GAE steps in to where we can break up that inflammatory process to provide you with pain relief. Before you get any kind of treatment for any sort of knee pain, there's always gonna be a workup process. So things that anyone is gonna look at, whether or not it's an orthopedic surgeon, me or someone else, always gonna need imaging. X-rays and MRI are gonna be the gold standard for evaluating for osteoarthritis. MRI gives you the most information. Um, it's a little bit more specific about the locations of the knee that are specifically affected and what procedure is actually the most appropriate thing for you. Uh, also, any evaluation for any sort of treatments that you've already tried maybe at home that maybe you didn't actually consider treatments, whether or not you just wore a knee brace, that's considered a medical treatment for knee pain that you may have just done on your own, whether or not you were using compression or any medications that you were taking at home. We'll ask about physical therapy, whether or not you've had any of that or things like injections or creams or steroids or any other previous surgeries as well. 
other things that will、uh, take place in clinic are going to be filling out some surveys. So there's two surveys called the WOMAC survey and the VAS survey. WOMAC stands for Western Ontario McMaster's University Arthritis Index. Forget that whole thing. Let's just call it WOMAC. It's easy. It's a 24 question survey that assigns a score for your pain on a scale of 0 to 100. The VAS scoring system stands for Visual Analog Scoring,、uh, which is also a pain scale. It's a series of questions that you answer. And again, it assigns another score, 0 to 100, for your pain. We use this to monitor treatment success. And most clinics, no matter who you're seeing, are going to use these things as well. So let's say you got a, a knee replacement. We're going to want to see those scores before and after to make certain that you're going along a path of improvement, no matter what kind of treatments you get. So you've been diagnosed with osteoarthritis. What treatment options are there for you? Probably the best known one is going to just be a knee replacement or total knee arthroplasty or TKA. So, of patients that are given the options to have a TKA, only about 33% of patients are willing to really entertain getting a knee replaced, regardless of the severity of their osteoarthritis. As far as that goes, about 20% of patients that end up getting the surgery are dissatisfied with the results afterwards. So, about one in five patients don't get the pain relief that they're looking for. That being said, Total knee arthroplasty or knee replacement is considered the gold standard for treating osteoarthritis. It does have a long recovery that involves physical therapy. It's got complication rates for sure, infections at the incision site, things like that. It has been around quite a long time.、Um, not everyone is a candidate for knee replacement. A lot of that will be based on BMI、uh, and other comorbidities such as heart issues or lung issues. Those may rule you out for the procedure since you do have to have general anesthesia for that surgery. So you have to be a safe candidate in order to get it done. Another treatment option for knee pain due to arthritis is going to be injections. It's probably one of the better known and more commonly used treatment options. Essentially, you're sticking a needle into the painful part of the knee and you're injecting a local anesthetic as well as steroids. These can provide some instant pain relief, but also some prolonged pain relief as well. These are very, very valuable in patients that are trying to get through physical therapy to get themselves into a better spot so they can maybe become a candidate for something like a knee replacement or another treatment.、It、provides pain relief for one to three months. It's a little bit variable. Patients don't get a consistent result with the injection. So sometimes they may go and get an injection and they'll get a legitimate three months of pain relief to where they're able to go and live their best life. Walk around, get up and down stairs, but then the next time they go, they'll only get two or three weeks of relief. It depends on where you're injecting, who's doing the injection, et cetera. So it's, it can be a little bit inconsistent, but regardless, if you're the patient getting injections, you usually have to get multiple per year if you're trying to maintain a good quality of life with pain free knees. All right, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about the results of GAE or the procedure that we offer here at Echo Medical.、Um, relative to the other ones, it's not as well studied as the other two. It hasn't been around as long, but it is still established and there is published data out there. For the most part, the data shows that you get up to one year of pain relief after this procedure. Now, that being said, the studies that have been done have not followed patients for longer than a year. So, Maybe you get more pain relief for longer than 12 months, or it may be a little bit less. For the most part, they do know that you don't need to get the procedure near as often as, say, injections. So, if you're okay with getting a procedure once every year or once every 18 months rather than having a knee replacement, then GAE is probably going to be right for you. It's a low risk procedure with the main complication being skin changes or even developing a skin ulcer. Uh, after the procedure. That doesn't happen on procedure day. It usually happens a few weeks after. Up to 10% of patients can get this complication. The arteries feeding the knee also have branches off of them that feed the skin. So when we inject these little beads, which we'll discuss a little bit later in the video, into the arteries that, that are feeding the inflamed portion, some of those beads can get into a branch feeding the skin and cut off the blood supply to the skin. In the area where that artery feeds, you can get some redness, swelling, a rash, or even a little skin wound. 
but that goes away within 30 to 45 days on its own without needing to do anything else. So while it is a complication, it's temporary, it's self-limiting, and it doesn't cause any long-term complications. Additionally, the patients that benefit most from GAE are gonna be the patients that have the highest scores on that WOMAC and VAS that we discussed earlier. So if you have an 84 score on both, you're gonna see a bigger improvement in your quality of life and your pain because you have more than someone with a score of 50. So the patients that have worse pain tend to benefit greater from GAE than someone that has more mild symptoms. Additionally, as far as overall results, patients can expect at least a 50% reduction in their pain. So that's sort of why someone with a larger score is gonna see more. So if you have an, a score of 84 and you drop down to a 42, that's huge. Whereas a 60 to a 30, not as big of an improvement. Some patients do get complete relief of pain, but I like to tell patients to set their expectations to be more realistic. If the data says 50 to 70% pain improvement, expect more on that 50%. So that way your expectations are in line with the results that you actually get. All the procedures we do at Echo Medical are outpatient and we do it right in our office. So you need to expect to carve out about a half day to be here, an hour before procedure time just to get IV started, uh, get through some paperwork, answer questions, things like that. The procedure itself usually takes about an hour. It may take up to 90 minutes. And then you need to expect about an hour of recovery after the procedure. You get moderate sedation for the procedure, or some people call it twilight. It's similar medications than what you would get for a colonoscopy. So you may not remember the procedure, but you do remember bits and pieces of the day, but you're very tired. You may sleep through the whole thing. As far as how the procedure is done, how does it work and why does it work? So usually we do a needle stick into an artery in your groin. Uh, it's a big artery. It's just underneath the skin. It's easy to access. We don't have to go through any major tissue or structures in order to get to it. We use ultrasound guidance to get into it, so it's a single needle stick. We then put a wire through that hollow needle into the artery, and then we use x-ray guidance to guide that wire through the blood vessels into the area of the knee that we're treating. The knee has a very rich vascular supply, so you have up to seven genicular arteries, hence the name genicular artery embolization. Genicular means knee, artery is artery itself, and you have multiple. So. I won't go through all of them, but it's things like the superior medial genicular artery, superior lateral, medial and inferior. You have all of these different blood vessels. And so the MRI that we get beforehand lets us know which arteries we're gonna be treating on procedure day. As far as how this procedure works, what is embolization? Embolization means to cut off the blood supply. So we go into these arteries and we know beforehand which ones we're treating because of the MRI. We go into the artery that we know we're gonna treat and then we find the branches that are feeding the inflamed portion of the knee. And if you remember earlier on, I said that the inflammatory process in the knee is specifically with arthritis, creates this kind of nest of blood vessels that are providing the inflamed tissue trying to heal it. But you have an overabundance of these blood vessels that really don't need to be there. And so it actually kind of increases your pain because it increases the inflammatory response you have on a daily basis. So we go into those blood vessels and then we inject these little tiny beads that you can barely see with the naked eye. And they plug up those capillary beds that are causing the inflammatory response. This decreases the inflammatory response on a daily basis because we're cutting off some of that blood supply, thereby decreasing your pain. We're not cutting off the blood supply to the knee in total, just to the inflamed tissue with those little tiny beads. So when you break down the name of GAE or genicular artery embolization, it's pretty descriptive as to what we're actually doing. So we're cutting off the blood supply or embolizing the arteries that are branches of the genicular artery that are causing the, inflame, the inflammation and the pain. After the procedure, we'll be prescribing you a few medications. We'll prescribe you steroids, which will help decrease the inflammation that can be caused by this procedure. Any medical procedure causes inflammation no matter what you're doing. This one is no exception. Steroids will help dampen that inflammatory response to decrease post-procedural pain. We'll also prescribe you some narcotics that you can take as needed should you have pain that's not being managed with the steroids. Additionally, if you ever develop something like a skin ulcer or skin rash, that can have some burning and tingling with it. If you develop that, then we can prescribe some anesthetic gel, like a lidocaine gel that you would rub on that area to help numb that up so you don't feel that burning sensation. 
Patients often wonder when they can return to physical activity and, and doing their normal life. The real answer is the next day, minus some limitations. After any artery needle puncture, we want to limit the amount of heavy lifting that you do on a daily basis for seven days after the procedure. We define heavy lifting as anything above 15 pounds. As you can imagine, if you're bending over and then you have to pick up something heavier, you're bearing down, and then that can increase the pressure in the arteries, which could pop that puncture site uh, that we had done during the procedure. That heals up after seven days, so you can return to all of the activity that you can tolerate after seven days. Next day after the procedure though, you can drive, you can go do errands, you can do anything else. You just can't do any lifting above 15 pounds. The minimally invasive procedures we do at Echo Medical are outpatient. You walk in, you walk out, and they're very low impact on your body. We use moderate sedation for the procedure, so you're snoozing or completely asleep throughout the procedure, but we're not putting a tube down into your lungs to breathe for you like you need to do with general anesthesia. In general, people don't remember the procedure. They may remember a flash here and there, but for the most part, you don't remember anything about it. It's safe. We do it here every single day and we have skilled and trained staff to be able to administer these medications safely. If you have any questions that weren't answered while you were watching this video, or if you think of anything afterwards, please don't hesitate to ask me or one of the providers that you speak with. We're always gonna be available and you can always call us if you forget to ask us something during your consultation.